Hello, everyone. Welcome. Happy to see you all here. Uh, as promised, uh, today is going to be the second workshop in a series of three uh, of Mantle. Uh, and for today's workshop, we're going to be learning on how to create uh, NFTs on Mantle. Uh, and to present this workshop uh, to us is going to be Woodcutch from the uh, Mantle team, who I will invite to the stage right now. It's going to be the last workshop for this week. Uh, then there's going to be obviously a weekend break, and there's going to be another one next week. Uh, of course, you should have uh, an invite on your side, uh, a pop-up that invites you to move to the stage. Hello, hello to everyone. Uh, feel free to use the chat section. If you do have questions, if you want to just say hi, uh, do say GM uh, on, or good afternoon, regardless of, uh, depending on where you are. But if you do have questions, make sure to post them in chat and, uh, and we will take some time after the workshop to uh, address all of them and provide information where needed. Yeah, hey, hi. Sorry, uh, I was just uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was, I was getting worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no worries. All good, um, fantastic. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I was just trying to find a virtual background for like, uh, because I'm in the middle of moving, so my house is a mess, plus my uh, dog. Yeah, so I wasn't able to sit on that setup, so I was just trying to figure out where uh, should I, yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, like, happy to be here, and then, um, uh, yeah, I can see already, like, folks have started joining in. Yeah, again, uh, happy to get this session started. Uh, if yeah, I can... maybe just introduce yourself for a couple of words uh, so that everyone can get to know you, and then we can jump into the presentation. Sure, uh, sure, I'll do it. Uh, I'll just, okay, sure. Yeah, should I do it with my screen? I'll share my oh, screen. As you wish, whatever is more. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, I think um, just let me know in between if uh, I'm muted or anything happens. I'll I'll just quickly have a look at it. No worries. Um, yeah, uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining in. Uh, uh, I am Dehuth. That is my unknown name. I am a devil engineer at Mantle. I lead various initiatives under um, Mantle, uh, under the devil team. I... Also, work, most of my most of my efforts really go into um, making sure that onboarding for beginner devs is really smooth as we hit the mainnet. So a lot of efforts are being put there. Um, but then, yeah, um, a little background update. Uh, so I was uh, almost like four years back, four to five years back. I was in the field of data science where I had my uh, where I had two of my exits, and then I eventually. In early 2018, 2019, I fell down the Bitcoin white paper. I used to uh, mine Bitcoin as well. Uh, that is when I figured out, okay. Uh, so yeah, so uh, like many of the folks out there, like I fell into the Web3 rabbit hole and then uh, here we are. Um, but then yeah, like happy to get the session started if we have all the folks who have already joined in. Um, yeah, the majority of already here. Uh, I mean, people always uh, come in late, so uh, feel free to take it away. And also, all these sessions are being recorded, so um, uh, everyone will be able to follow. Sounds good. Okay, cool. We can we can actually get started. Um, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, like yesterday, one of my colleagues, Pranjal, he had a session on um, Zero to Hero getting started on Mantle. Uh, that session, like, it is very beginner friendly. It should have helped everybody just figure out as to um, how to set up your MetaMask and then how to interact with Mantle Testnet and also deploy a simple smart contract using um, Remix, right? So I think most of the sessions right now are like very beginner focused to, just to make sure that everybody has their environment set up to interact with Mantle Testnet. Today, we just take it up a notch where we would also be hands down coding. So I would request everybody to um, make sure they have their laptops ready and then it is a simple code along session. You can you can see my screen, everything that is going on. So basically, you can follow along. And then um, as and when, if, let's say, links are required, I'll be sharing it on the chat as well. Um, so yeah, uh, we have like 60 minutes right now. Well, let's make the most of it. I think we should be able to create and uh, deploy the NFT. Uh, I'm not so sure if we'll be able to mint it as well, uh, because it has a lot of steps. But then let's see. OK. Um, so the only prerequisites will be to install uh, Node.js greater than 14 and then also NPM on your local machine. Um, and then also to make sure that you have VS Code installed. Those are the only four things, only three things that you need right now. Um, yeah, rest will be installing on the go. 
Cool. Um, we'll take 30 seconds of time for everybody to open their laptops and their favorite ID. Uh, I'm using VS Code. Feel free to use any ID if you're anything that you like as well. Um, yeah, so I think we can get started. Um, so basically, this tutorial, we'll be able to walk you through uh, deploying a non-fungible contract. Uh, that would be ERC721. Um, so we'll be using hard at Solidity, and then also contracts from Open Zeppelin. Um, obviously, custom RPC config to also interact with Mantle Testnet. Um, IPFS, we might use in part two, where we might have to interact and then upload metadata of the NFT. Um, but then, yeah, like apart from that, it should be very beginner friendly. And then I'll make sure to drop in the links on the chat on the go if it is required. But then other than that, like, I think we can directly just get started. Um, let me, so I have a new instance of um, VS Code already running. So the first thing to do is like this type node V. This is just to check if you have node installed. If you don't have node installed, it won't show anything. And then it will uh, give you the link to install node. So make sure you are installing node.js greater than 15. And also you have npm installed on your local machine. Um, then now, now that you've checked that you have your node installed, the second thing is just to make sure you create a node project, right? Um, so what we do is we create an empty node project. Um, so how do we do that is that we do mkdir. And then let's, I already have my NFT, so I'll try to name it my NFT one for this, but then, uh, and then what we do is CD my NFT one. Okay, cool. Um, Also, once this session is over, I will also be sharing the blog, which is published, which will be having all the steps already. Uh, it is a three-part series blog, which uh, should basically tell you how to create the NFT, deploy the NFT, and also view the NFT, which is yours on the MetaMask uh, using the mobile app. Um, so yeah, so that should be easy. Let me just... Okay, just saying that it should be. Yeah, cool, be there. Um, got me worried there for a little bit as to why kind of things are not working. Um, cool. So basically what we did was that first we navigated to the main directory where we wanted to create the project. And then um, I just uh, wrote the, so basically if there are overrides, it will tell you that it already exists. Uh, so when we type npm init y, it is basically a command which is used to in uh, initialize a new Node.js project, and it creates a package.json file, right? Now, what exactly is package.json file? It is basically a file config for the Node.js project, which will hold all sorts of like important information for your project, like name, version, dependencies, etc., right? Um, now, now that that is done, what we can do is like we can open a folder. From here directly, I actually put it in my projects. It should be like my, okay. Let me just check as to where this was created very quickly. Ah, cool. I think um, the default has changed, so it should be over here. Yeah, we found it. Okay, cool. my bad. Cool, now that we have our environment set up and now we are in the main root of the um, project, now we open the terminal, it refreshes. Now what we do is uh, the first, now everything resets and now we start from scratch from here. 
all we have done till now is that we have opened the terminal and then we, in a very complicated way, we've just created a folder and then um, uh, initialized the project, uh, right? That is all we have done till now. Uh, now, what we do is like we create a hard hat project, right? Now, hard hat is a development environment to compile, deploy, test, and debug smart contracts. Um, some prefer using Truffle as well. Uh, it is up to you, but then we will be using hard hat based on the request that we got initially. Um, so we quickly just install hard hat. So it should be helping. Uh, yeah, sure. You share. Uh, so it would be MP, they are, yeah, this should be it. The first line first, and then you hit enter, and the second one um, right after. Yeah, amazing, Dan. Um, so, yeah, so now coming back to the hard app thing, now what we have to do is like npm install save dev hard app. Let me just check. Wait. I could. I'll copy paste this as well. Yeah, like, yeah, makes sense. It's a code long, so I'll just keep sharing it as and when I go. And then once we'll wait for it to install, and then what we, so basically what NPM does is like, it's a command to install the hard art Ethereum development environment. And then what it does is basically the dev dependency, the dev dependency it gets saved as uh, dependence, which is basically a dev dependency for the node project, right? Um, yeah. I think it is done. It says zero vulnerabilities found. So, okay, I think we are good. Next would be, okay, cool. Nothing on the chat, NPX hard hat. And then, okay, cool. I'll wait for everybody to reach there because Dan is following. Let me know if you're here, right? I want to make sure that this is a code long and nobody gets bored and they just leave. Cool. Till the time he's uh, installing, what we do is, um, so what we wrote over here was NPX hard hat. What that does is it's a basically command line to run the hard hat. NPX, which is basically a tool that uh, comes with the Node.js, and then it allows you to execute the Node.js packages, right? And hard hat is the name of the package, which allows us to do all these, all sorts of operations, right? Now that we are done with this setup, of, uh, setting up of hard hat, we'll check as to if everything has been working correctly, right? But let me just quickly confirm something on my end as well. Let me just do that very quickly before we move ahead. Cool, I think we are good. Um, right, and then once we do that, uh, use your arrow keys to navigate over here. You can see once I use my arrow keys, I'll be able to navigate. And then what we do is we create a JavaScript project, right? And then we hit enter, uh, hard hat project in the same route, yes, yes. We type yes, and do you want to install the samples for the dependency? And we type yes for that as well. Cool. Now, hard is getting installed. Once we do that, we have a command as well to check if everything is working properly as well. So uh, we'll do that once this is installed. Um, also, if, if you're a big node who's just getting started, so setting up the environment is what takes most amount of can it be TypeScript project? Yeah, it can be a TypeScript project as well. It can be. Um, yeah. But then, okay, so can this one be a TypeScript project? No, like we'll be using JavaScript here. Uh, but then, yeah, it can be a TypeScript project as well. Uh, there's some cases where it might run, uh, but then there's, to avoid any sort of like dependency issues, I think you should go with JavaScript over here, but then yes, uh, it can definitely be a TypeScript project as well. Um, yeah. 
cool i think everybody i've i've given like 5 to 10 seconds so everybody should be able to follow right we're good okay now that this is just uh this has been installed what we do is we write npm r hat test so this command okay uh yeah i think you should i think so the thing is like with dependencies yeah i think you should like with dependencies it yeah 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 cool um so yeah this is the next command that you have to run what command after npm save it was this one vikram error cannot find module nomic functions yeah you basically have to reinstall the whole thing uh, like what i would suggest is you delete the whole folder and then you make a new folder and manually open it using vs code to save you some time and um, then yeah you rerun the commands which i've given you do you think i should install the toolbox uh harder toolbox the harder toolbox yeah like you should install everything that is there like just type yes to everything okay cool um uh, tick i think uh, our last command that we wrote was in pxr at test right uh, so uh be ba it basically is a command to check if everything is working properly and it does a way a various tests on the back end uh we can see nine passing so uh if you see any of the crosses over here then yeah like there would be some uh, dependency uh dependency issues so it is uh like you should definitely just uh delete the file and then reinstall it again right cool um now actually we can move on to the coding part of things um now that our whole environment is set up you can see over here we have contracts we have node modules and then we have scripts which is deploying so these are like pre-made templates this comes with installing hard hat right now we'll be using something which is known as like open zeppelin contracts package uh this will basically give you access to erc721 implementations right which is the go to standard for nfts or and that will be used right we'll be using those to build on top of it right and we will be adding our own custom uh code to make sure that it interacts with mantle testnet right so what we do is like next thing npm install open zeppelin slash contracts i'll make sure i send this over to you folks as well um again just to repeat open zeppelin contracts you install after all the checks have passed and after you have written npx hard at test right only then we'll wait for it to installed and as i'm not so sure if my terminal has been visible till now but then i'll make sure that i'll zoom in a little bit i think now it should be right um so yeah over here you can see like there is 11 vulnerabilities we'll ignore them for now let's see if our if we have like deployment issues we'll come back to it right um yeah like based on uh the various times i've deployed using this there's always like vulnerabilities with the dependencies and that because we'll be using so many things together um that's how it works like we'll debug once we know if there's some error or once we reach to the end and we'll backtrack um is everyone following like is everybody till opens up in package i think we still have like good 40 minutes so we can spend some time waiting for everybody to catch up okay i think everybody is following understood um so yeah so the next so obviously it is like understood that we'll be using solidity to write our contract which is the go to standard for writing contracts when it comes to uh any sort of evm chain right um what we do is now uh we go to the fo folder which is known as contracts and over here 
we create a new file uh yep uh we create a new file which is known as my nft.sol i think that should work and we just move it to contracts folder right cool i think now everyone should be following as well all we did was we installed open zeppelin contracts and then what we did was we created a new solidity file under the contracts folder which was named as mynft.sol obviously you can name it anything but then i would suggest the naming convention stays the same so that once the session is over i give you the blog and you'll be able to find it directly without facing any issues by the time everybody is still following let me just um quickly um type in the variables and then we can get this sorted right also like usually what devs do is that they just copy all of whatever i'm trying to type you don't have to type it like this is a standard which is um followed in all smart contracts and then deploying on smart contracts right so you can basically just copy it from the open zet plain contracts which are already existing right see over here it is the same thing this is basically an spx license identifier right and then the ones i'm writing right now like you will be able to find them online as well but then since everybody is following i might as well type so that everybody catches up and that we can all ship this whole thing together right token it would be uh, erc 721 yep 721 and then we need extensions as well um new message okay then we have erc 721 uri um if you want me to slow down or if you've missed out on any of the steps please let me know in the comments or the chat whatever um yeah i'm just slowing down and then i'm typing the import functions very slowly to make sure everybody catches up right Vikram, I'm not so sure. Like, open Zeppelin. Like, are you stuck there? What do you mean? Like, are you correcting? Oh yeah, yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. at the rate was missing cool cool um thanks yeah yeah it's a good indication that everybody's following along like i want workshops to be like code long so that everybody follows but then yeah uh, thanks thanks for that so basically what we did here was like we imported yasc send one uri storage dot sol counters an ownable function ownable function is the fun it is basically where is it 
where is pragma yeah might as well just let's go yeah it's fine like uh uh ignore the spelling mistakes for now like eventually like by the time we complete the whole contract like i'll i'll make sure everything goes like yeah right <laughs> it's it's not a worry cool um okay um now i think everybody is on the same page right okay cool i think i think we are good to go yeah um so yeah just to let you know what basically uri storage is it basically contains the implementation of erc721 standard uh that is the nft contract that our smart contract will inherit right um so basically for your nft to be valid your smart contract must implement all the methods of erc721 standard okay um now coming to the second one which is counters.sol it basically provides a counters that can only be incremented or decremented by one so what does that mean uh so basically wherever we deploy a smart contract a smart contract uses a counter to keep a track of all the total number of nfts that have been minted right which have a unique set of id um to our nft right so it is basically a counter function which increments or decrements by one now we come to ownable.sol which sets up the access control for your smart contract right so only the owner of the smart contract which will be determined using your private key will be able to mint nfts right um now if you want anybody to be able to mint your smart contract i'll also let you know once we have finished the whole um mynft.sol contract right i'll be able to tell you uh, as to what function to basically remove so that anybody will be able to mint your nft that's not something you want always till the time you are airdropping but then it's fine cool um now we can start actually writing can i paste all the imports over here yeah sure let me do that i think slash contracts not needed for me as my npm parity has done totally using our awesome folder um i mean yes in a way yeah uh, but then the thing is like whenever we are like doing like at least for me when i'm doing or writing blogs like i make sure like all the standards are followed so to avoid any dependency issues as and when we have new versions of npm launch right uh, because of slight issues like the blog gets deprecated very fast so i make sure to follow all the standards and then yeah just to be sure that the blog is able to run for at least a year since it it uh, it is deployed uh, i mean it is published right um otherwise like i think it you're correct like you can actually try it out um yeah and then let me know how it goes so i think this is the first one yeah now let me just check if i'm able to uh send it across yeah it goes now it is going yeah this should be good so i think we are on the right part and then i think we should be able to finish this really fast right and then we write ownable once i'm done with typing i will be explaining it on the go as to what we are doing right and then whatever i explained as to with the very first parts of as to whatever we are trying to import like um basically the whole contract is doing the similar thing right everyone good like uh done i've sent the first line of code and then also the import functions so you should be good right uh, once i type this out i'll also be sending it part by part i'm waiting for everybody to type with me as well like if everybody like are you are you folks also waiting for me to type everything out and just send it out to you like are you folks typing with me as well i can zoom in more if this helps typing with you okay cool yeah <laughs> that's the way to go for it like so what we do is like counters counter private and then what we need is um token ids right and then we need to call a constructor basically 
constructor this should be like this and then which would be rc721 is the one that we're using um we are calling my nft and then nft right we want to do it you know Uh, I think I hope my screen is visible, so you're able to see the whole thing. And then I just zoomed in as well. Um, so basically, what we are uh, doing is that we have our custom smart contract, which will be ready, and it will be surprisingly short. Uh, it only contains a construct, a counter, a constructor, and a single function. Uh, that is uh, because thanks to the inherited Open Zeppelin contract, right, which is already implemented all the methods we need for the NFT. Uh, which would be such as owner of returns the owner and then transfer from which transfers the ownership or everything is already there, right? Um, so yeah. Cool. I think we should be good now. What I'll do is like I'll at least paste this part for everybody who's following with me, and then um, now we can actually write our function for. Um, the smart contract, and this should be the last one. And then I think post that we have a few more steps, and we should be able to um, at least deploy the NFT smart contract on Mantle Tester. Also, by then, um, if if you weren't following yesterday's, um, if you weren't there for yesterday's um, uh, the workshop. Make sure that you have your MetaMask set up, and then you also have some Bit tokens with you. Otherwise, I can try to send you your Bit uh, Bit tokens so that uh, you can uh, deploy the smart contract. But because you will be needing a little bit of Bit tokens to interact, and then also deploy this contract, right? Um, so make sure your wallet, whichever wallet you're using, like MetaMask wallet, it could be A B C D D any any of those. It has Mantle testnet on it, and then under the test that you have some amount of bit tokens. Um, if anybody wants, like I can also share the faucet. Um, yeah, we'll do it right, right after we are done with writing the thing. But then I just wanted everybody to know and to be prepared. Otherwise, yeah, like there are, yeah. Um, also. Like, uh, I would also like uh, suggest everybody who is new to VS Code to uh, install an extension which is known as Prettier. It basically, um, okay, where did where did this go? Yeah, so it basically what it does is it just um, makes sure that everything is correct line by line, right? Um, yeah, so we don't have any issues, right? I hope everybody's following as well. I think two, five, six is the one. Is mint NFT function and interface? Do you like? What do you mean by interface? Like, uh, as in, would it be like an interface on the website? Oh yeah. So brackets come a little later. I'll just do it after the only owner is defined. So basically, what we do is like returns over here. Yeah, I go. I I could see what you said. So see, you win two five six right. Yeah. So under this, we'll be writing everything. Yeah. So that is why, like, I'll be using Pretty or like, um, let me just do it. Where is it? For my document. Um, I'm not so sure why it is not working. We'll have a look a little later, but then yeah. Um, yeah, I got what you said. 
Um, this actually should be in the middle so that, yeah, because over here you can see it won't read it as a function till we have this set up. I'm not so sure like as to why this is not working. We can, yeah, let me just uninstall and then install it quickly because otherwise it might be a problem because it's a hassle to you. I will have a look at it later. Don't want to miss more time. Um, cool. And now this is the basic function that we write. So uh, that now we would actually be using the increment and the decrement, not the decrement for now. But then, yeah, uh, basically what we type is uh, we will be incrementing the token IDs over here, right? To make sure that every NFT that we mint, it increments the value the number of that specific NFT, right? Um, I think it should be, I think, I think it's correct. Um, then we have new item ID. Uh, right. And then we have set, we have token URI, right? It should be correct. Then we have new item ID, and then we have token URI. I think we are good, right? Um, is return new, and then should be items ID that we return. Yeah, so now the only thing is like, we have to format this correctly because this is where I feel um, there might be issues, right? Um, I'll try to keep it over here. And then by the time, like I'll figure out as to why this function. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'll, I, I won't open the file, but then yeah. Uh, so that is why like I, uh, Requested everybody to uh, identify a not found or not unique. You're getting it under counters. Under counter counter. It is actually counters counter. Uh, can you type S there and then check? OK. Uh, by the time that is done, let me just quickly check as to why this isn't working. I think only owner. Um, Refactoring is not available as well. I'm not so sure why pretty or is it working. Um, by the time, like I'll send in the whole code for everybody to uh, just check out, right? Uh, okay, I think long form texts are not supported in the chat. So what I can do is like, I think I already sent, so I have to send from contracts, right? And uh, did that work? So what I would suggest is when, whenever you're like coding along, like there, the, there would obviously be mistakes like oh, S is missing or maybe something as big as small, uh, uh, especially whenever we are like trying to declare functions, right? Uh, also the type of format that you follow, format depend, like format matters a lot. Like here, my format is definitely wrong from what I can see as well. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out like as to how I fit the whole thing in, right? Um, and also, like, um, yeah, cutting and pasting, like, right. Let me do one thing. Let me just copy the whole thing and then paste it again. Yeah. Yeah, it should be fine. 
Um, make sure you're copying the one that I sent it on um, the chat section. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, it should be fine now. I'll just wait quickly and then I'll explain as to what is going on with the contract because we've just finished writing our contract. Right? The only thing, the only thing was that this wasn't um, the function uh, wasn't framed correctly, so that is why we were getting an error. Like, if you would have followed me and what I was doing, so this public and the whole owner thing, it was not refactored properly. Yeah, I think like we might just be able to deploy the NFT. Um, but then it's fine. Like we are, uh, as, as long as like there's everybody's following and then everybody's coding along at the same time. And then everybody is able to deploy an NFT by the end of the session. It works out for uh, all of us. Um, I'll make sure to drop in the next parts, um, uh, before the session is done. I'll drop it in the chat as well. Um, cool. Till the time everybody follows and then everybody copies from my screen or copies from the chat. So. Basically, what we have done till now is that our, we have finalized writing our custom NFT contract. Uh, we have kept it very short. Um, we are passing basically two strings over here, which would be buy NFT and NFT, right, into the ERC-721 uh, ERC constructor. Uh, the first variable is the smart contract's name, and the second one is the symbol of the NFT, right? You can actually change it to anything you want, but then to keep everything short and not to confuse everybody, I've just kept it to buy NFT and NFT. Um, you can name each of these variables, whatever you wish. Right. Um, and then we have our, my, uh, what do you say? The mint NFT function that allows us to mint any sort of NFT you want. Um, here you'll notice that we have basically, uh, you'll notice the functions over here. They basically take into a variable variables. That is the address of the recipient, right? That is the recipient's address. And then also. Uh, the string memory token URI, which will basically be a string that should be used to resolve your JSON document. That is, um, JSON document basically will be having your NFT's metadata, right? Metadata is something that your NFT, um, it basically adds, you. it isn't supposed to have a metadata, but then it is what helps people understand as to what then uh, NFT is about. You can have your info about uh, like whatever the NFT is, you can have your info about it in the metadata, right? That should be a very simple answer. Um, yeah. Cool. I think everybody is following and then everybody has this set. Um, what I would suggest is that whenever your, um, what do you say? Uh, whenever your contract is done, just make sure that you're hitting command and S if you are on, um, MacBook, or I think it would be control in S to save, or basically you can manually save your files, right? Just make sure that you're saving all of the files that you're working on. Till now we have worked with just one, right? Now moving on to the next step, I hope everybody's following and then everybody's on the same page. What we do now is that we connect our MetaMask to our project so that it recognizes that we are the owners of the NFT and we want it to be printed. How we are doing that is basically by using our private key. Um, I might use my second screen for the private crease so that I don't share it uh, over here. But then what we have to do over here is that, okay, basically what we have to do is run a command. You don't have to actually run a command, but then um, it is always good to know as to how, um, yeah, devs do it. Is It is basically a good practice to do so, uh, but then, yeah. Um, so here, what we did was we basically installed the .env package in our project directly by running npm install .env .safe, right? Um, then what we do is that we can create what we create in .env file in the root directory of our um, project, right? Um, cool. And this is the place where we actually add the private keys. I if does everybody you are watching know how to export their private keys. I can quickly share a link which explains how to export your private keys. I think it will be a nice way, nice to share it because a lot of people will be actually be watching the recording. So it will be nice for them to get the yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Also, make sure that you're never sharing your uh, private keys with anyone. 
um, it's the only thing that keeps you safe, right? Um, always make sure you are not sharing your private keys with anyone. Um, yeah. Use this guide and then you can make sure. Um, yeah. Only use this guide and no, don't use any of the external links to export your private keys ever, right? All of it, either it is done in the mobile app or the extension, you don't have to use any third party uh, softwares, APIs, anything to export your private keys and never do that, right? Cool. Um, so what we do is that we basically, there is this, where is this? Okay. We create a .env file and then um, in the .env file, we basically type private key is equal to dash, 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 whatever your private key is, right? I'll quickly just stop sharing my screen. I'll export my private key first and then I'll add it again, right? Um, disable screen sharing. I think my screen um, should not be visible, but then it's fine. Like it is, um, yeah, it is not the main wallet. Like <laughs> I would suggest everybody to buy ledgers. Like, uh, not promoting Ledger or sponsored by them, but then they are pretty cool. They actually tend to keep your things safe. Um, ah, cool, it is done. Let me just close it. Um, also, please don't uh, export your private keys and put it in the chat over here. Please don't do that. Nobody has to know your private keys and then it's, it's just supposed to stay with you. I'll tell you as to what goes in the ENV file and then what would be the way to uh, make sure you're doing it correctly so that there's no hiccups when you are um, deploying this contract. Okay, we are having just three minutes. Uh, let us just quickly get on to it. Uh, entire screen, screen one, share. Uh, thankfully, we're not on .env. So you must have seen over here, like I have a .env file over here, right? Uh, this basically has my private key. And what you have to do is you basically have to type this in your, priv uh, in your .env file. It will be private key is equal to and whatever private key you exported. Uh, no commas, no spaces uh, after you've exported, no semicolons to be added. It's just your private key and you can just save the file and then you can let it be, right? That um, is all. Can you, can you showcase this on your, uh, on your screen and type it out? Because for people that will be following the recording, they will not be able to see the chat. Uh, oh, they won't be able to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So for the ones who are watching the recording, you have to type out private underscore key, uh, all caps, e space equal to whatever key that you exported, right? Private key is similar to one, two, three, four. Do I need to add zero X? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, uh, so with the latest updates, like, yeah, it works even with or without zero X. That's actually a good question. So you to be just sure you can actually add zero X and then add your exported private key but then most of the time, it also works without adding 0x as well. Test it out both. Yeah. But then it's a good practice to add 0x. Cool. Nice. Um, I think the ones you are uh, looking at the recording session, so you have to open your ENV file, right? And then you have to type it, uh, type in private underscore key is equal to 0x and then your private key. I think we are good, um, right? I think everybody's funny. Let me just open the chat quickly over here. Cool. Now we have like two steps remaining. So I think we might need five minutes extra if that is fine by everybody. Uh, now what we do is basically we have to update our hard hat config to JS file, which was there before. Uh, we will be adding Mantle's custom config. Um, I'll be copy pasting it because there is nothing to learn over there. It is something that we provide. Every network basically provides their own custom config to interact with their chain, right? So on the screen, you can see you have a file which is known as hardhatconfig.js. 
all you have to do is replace the contents with what I basically copy pasted below. Um, here, it is the basic version of Solidity that we're using right now. Um, so this actually stays the same. You cannot edit it. Otherwise, your smart contract wouldn't know which network to interact with, and it, the deployment basically fails. So for Mantle's testnet, it is Mantle testnet, rpc.testnet.mantle.xyz, and then accountsprocess.env.privatekey. Process.env, it basically what it does is it is fetching your account info um, from the env file. How do we get Mantle network in our wallet? Um, good question. I can actually send a link for you to get onboarded really quickly. Um, I hope it's fine. Like I'm going to just uh, quickly shift my notion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, uh, can you just follow this uh, quick tutorial, like custom network on MetaMask? Um, yeah, this, here you should be able to add the custom network. And then um, with that, you should also be able to import the token. Let me just check if we have another um, set of video. Please, can we get the network space state over here? Sure, I can do that as well. Let me just quickly open a few links and then I'll get the info for you. Also, a quick reminder for everyone watching, we will have all the links, including the presentation uh, and everything relevant in the recording. And that uh, will be shared tomorrow as well as so all the presentation materials will be made available on the Discord and uh, in the channels. Um, so yeah, no worries about any links that are being shown, presentations, uh, et cetera. Yeah, and after like right after the deployment is done, I'll also um, quickly share the blog for the ones who are um, lagging behind a little bit, it's completely fine. Code longs usually don't end up being code longs because of yeah. the time restrictions. Uh, I'll quickly share the link. The blogs are already deployed. Um, uh, Kingsley for you, like here it is. Uh, Mantle testnet would be the name. Uh, it will be rpc.testnet. Chain ID is 5001. And then currency symbol is bit. Right? Um, that should be done. This is also saved. Um, now what we do is like under the scripts folder, uh, we just have to write a simple deployment script. We won't be using the already existing one, which has been provided by the Open Zeppelin thing. So Mantle testnet is separate from Golly. Mantle foresight asked me for Golly foresight to send the tax. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Mantle testnet like. Like my given mantle is an EVM, so currently it is deployed on Golly because it is on testnet. Mantle's actual uh, the main net it will be on ETH, right? That is how it works with testnet. So Mantle site asked me for Golly faucet to send transaction. Yeah, so that is how it works. Uh, are you acquiring bit from Golly? Because then you will have to. Any faucet to get the get test code. I, I might as well just send you uh, the link. Um, yeah, let me just do that quickly. Um, uh, let me just send you a faucet which was created by one of our uh, devs during. Um, yeah, you can actually use this one. Um, it is less approval and then it directly gives you. I can't get bit as I don't have a Twitter account. Ah, that's an issue because most of the signups, like almost all faucets I know, they require Twitter. Uh, can you just send me a wallet address? I can quickly send it to you till the time uh, we are writing the scripts for uh, the deploy function. Yeah, I'll just send it to you right now. I shouldn't have removed the whole thing, um, but then let's see. Ah. I might as well end up sending multiple folks, like multiple. Uh... Okay, cool. Um, uh, let me just check as to which account are we on. Also, folks, like make sure like you're sending me the Mantle testnet contracts uh, addresses. Uh, I might have one forgot login. No worries, like, but then I would suggest that you um, get that going. 
Um, but then this is the faucet that I wanted to actually share with everybody. I'll do that first. Here. This is the faucet that one of our third party developers created, right? They created it for us. They wanted to test out how things are working. Um, shout out to Hashcase folks for creating this. Right. Let me just send quickly just send it out to folks. Uh, then we have Dan's address, which we need to send. Cool, I think uh, you should have received it uh, by now. Um, give it like 30 seconds and then you should have it. Like 5C and yeah, it is sent. Right. Um, cool. Uh, so, actually, to save some time, what I'll do is like I'll quickly just open my previous instance uh, from this screen. Um, I'll just copy paste the deploy function. Let me just open it. I'll copy it from here. Let me just find as to when I did this. Yeah, so sorry, like I don't really want to copy paste uh, during a code long session, but then given we are on a time crunch, I'll just copy paste the deploy function. Um, right. And also, no need to worry, like I'll be sharing the blog and then. Now, basically, just to uh, quickly go over as to whatever is happening over here, uh, basically, what we have done is we've defined a function called main that will handle the deployment of the contract, right? Uh, and then inside the main function, we, the code uses eaters or JS library to get a contract factory, right? Which would be named my NFT. Um, so in simple terms, like a contract factory is basically like a blueprint that is used to create multiple instances of the same contract, right? Um, now our code uses uh, the contract factory to basically deploy the new instance, which is my NFT contract, right? Um, yeah. So that was the gibberish for the whole thing that is over here. What basically what we are doing, it is basically a normal JavaScript script to deploy the whole thing. Hopefully everything's working fine. And then um, now we should be able to deploy the NFT at least, um, right? Uh, just to quickly confirm that everybody's following this code, which I sent right now, it has to go in the scripts folder in your deploy.js file. We won't be using the existing template, which has come from Open Zeppelin's package, right? Because we made a few changes of our own to their smart contract. Okay. And then I've sent the tokens as well. Cool. Now, all we have to type is npx. Getting a lot of text. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. Thanks for staying so attentive throughout. And then it's been a good session. We'll just quickly run this and then check if our deployment is working then we have network would be uh, dash dash network and then it would be mantle testnet npx we wrote hard at transcripts deploy js now yep i think we did ah cool uh, now you can see that we have successfully deployed our nft contract uh, I'm not sure why it said 15 solidity files successfully. Um, but then, yeah, like this is the address of our contract. Let us quickly just copy this and then um, open the Explorer. Uh, this is the link to the Explorer. Yeah, yeah, true. All the open Zeppelin. I think it's also because I created a new instance. Like, I, if I would have deployed it, um, if I would have used my previous folder, which was already deployed and then created again, then it. Then only the new contract would have been um, deployed. Uh, where is the code? Now that our um, NFT is actually deployed, what we do is basically we check 
I know. Okay, it is there. Yeah, see, uh, contract creation was a success. We haven't minted, so there won't be any transfers of NFT from one contract to another or any address uh, because we haven't done that. But all we have done till now was create the whole contract and then make sure it is deployed. So our contract was deployed. Um, yeah, you can see that zero transactions have happened and zero transfers have happened. Uh, but then our explorer is able to read the address correctly, which can confirm that it has been deployed on Mantle Tested. Um, so yeah, like I think that's it for this session. I would I wanted to also add the minting thing, but then uh, we might have to stretch it another hour. But then uh, thanks again, folks, for like uh, staying so active throughout. Like I really appreciate these sorts of session, other than the ones where we don't sort of like interact and I just keep blabbering. Um, yeah. Um, cool. Um, thanks. I think everybody who's see watching the recording, like I hope uh, I'll try my level best to send all the links so that it will be very much easier for everybody to follow as to whatever the, we did. But then also like make sure not to miss out on live sessions because those are the best places to learn as well. Thank you, thank you, Akash. This really was an amazing deep dive, and I think everyone that followed you enjoyed it. And I hope a lot of uh, our future viewers of, uh, of this workshop will end up enjoying it as well. Um, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. This was the uh, last uh, workshop for this week. There's going to be uh, another one next next week, which is going to be focusing on on-chain data. Uh, so yeah, the, do make sure to follow the Discord announcement channel for updates on when it's going to be taking place, uh, uh, just so you don't. Um, uh, you, you know, forget about it and yeah, enjoy your weekends and see you next week.